Information saves lives. The role of local media in fighting the infodemic is our next panel here on Stream 2, which will be headed by my colleague, Eddie Micah, Jr. Eddie, how are things? Well, things are okay. I've just uh, been listening to what you've been saying and uh, looking forward to an interesting discussion. Now, before I let you go, please tell me just a little bit about how the media has been covering the COVID crisis in your native country, Ghana. Well, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll say it's a, it's a bit the same all around the world. I mean, the media has tried to, um, try to reveal the, the, the virus, so to speak, because there's still a lot of people that do not believe even uh, until now. And so the media has tried to get closer to the people that have been affected in one way or the other to try to get their stories, to bring the, uh, the issue closer to people. So, so there's that. Um, we, fortunately, I would say, have not had too much pushback or any pushback, as far as I, I can tell, from the government in terms of, you know, uh, fact-checking or trying to make sure that whatever the government is saying is, 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 is true or not. Uh, so, so that's been a, a good part. But it's, it's obviously got a mixed reaction set, and, and uh, it's, it's a challenge that I'm sure Germany has also faced. Uh, but media still has to go on. We have to do what we're doing, right? Yes, of course. And uh, with that, I will let you discuss exactly that issue. And I look forward to learning a thing or two myself. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me try to take it away. Um, so as we've been talking about, we're, we're looking at the topic, uh, information saves lives, OK? Uh, we'll be joined uh, by three experts uh, from uh, Malawi, Colombia, and Egypt. They will be discussing, or they'll be helping discuss the role of uh, local media in fighting uh, the infodemic within the COVID pandemic. And I think that's, that's, that's interesting to know. There's, there's, on the other hand, this you know, pandemic happening and then infodemic happening within it. That just makes everything even more worse. But hey, without much ado, let's go straight into introducing the three lovely ladies that I have uh, with me. I have the, the honor of talking to them a while ago, but I'm going to start with Teresa Ndanga. Teresa Ndanga is an investigative journalist and uh, chairperson Malawi's chapter of the Media Institute of Southern Africa, MISA. Can you give us a wave? <laughs> I like the way going with a smile. Um, <laughs> and then let me go to uh, Dina Abukasala. I hope I did not butch out the name. I got it right, right? Okay. Um, so uh, Dina is a journalist and founder of EGAP. And uh, EGAP.co is a startup for supporting local journalists in Egypt. Uh, the aim is to help create inspiring stories for a global audience. Give us a wave, uh, Dina. <laughs> okay, and then let's go to Berlin, Pablo Herrero. Uh, Berlin is a radio broadcaster. Uh, she's also with DW Academy, a project officer with DW Academy and coordinator also. Let's not forget that. Uh, you also work with uh, Bokarabai, I should say, uh, radio in 9.6 FM in Colombia. Give us a wave. I feel like all of you guys, your backgrounds, your background is much better than mine, which is a bit sad, but uh, let's go straight into, into action here. So, so here's the thing. Why is it important even to talk about local journalism, journalism at the grassroots local level? I'm going to start uh, with you um, uh, from Malawi, Teresa. Thank you so much for, for that question. Um, I think it is very, very important uh, for the local police, especially in the COVID era, uh, to be in the forefront in uh, transmitting information on the COVID pandemic. Because, number one, there is a bit of some closeness uh, to the communities that you are broadcasting to or you are giving out information to. They tend to trust you more because sometimes they know you, uh, especially if you talk about um, the community media. They know you. Uh, you live in their community, you know their story, you live their story, and they tend to trust you more. So there's that kind of credibility uh, to your own um, uh, news uh, publication uh, because they know you. And um, number two as well, 
Um, it's the issue to do with uh, kind of a better understanding. As I said, you tend to live their life. You tend to live their problem. Uh, you tend to live their solution. So there is some sort of um, some closeness uh, to it that you understand their issues better. You understand their problems better. And therefore, when you are presenting this issue, you are presenting it in the way that they understand it uh, as, you, as simple as you can and uh, making sure that, you know, they are able to also take up these uh, solutions that you are providing. And you're not providing these solutions out of nowhere. You're providing them according to their own uh, locality. Um, in Malawi, let me just quickly jump into the situation in Malawi. It has been quite sure. difficult, even though the, the local press is very, very important. We have faced difficulties in terms of um, finances, sustainability of the press during the pandemic. It has been very, very difficult. Uh, the national media Media, for instance, they found themselves, you know, scaling down on their operations. Um, the startups, you know, they were closing down simply because they couldn't sustain their operations. And um, sometimes journalists had to leave work and others had to accept some pay cuts. So it was challenging to maintain work, to sustain media work, even though we know that press is very, very important. The local press is very, very important, especially in transmitting critical information in the in the, in the COVID pandemic. Number two, the challenging thing that we also saw, just quickly, uh, is the issue to do with attacks on journalists. Um, so there were restrictions wild, o wild over. There were restrictions according to, you know, with the coming in of the pandemic. And sometimes when journalists went out uh, to come enforcement of the restrictions, the authorities, especially the police, would turn against the journalists and attack them physically, verbally, sometimes detaining them. And it was very, very difficult for their work in news gathering to continue to give factual information um, around the pandemic when you are also being an attacked. Okay. Um, so what's your story, Dina? <laughs> My story or the story of the local journalism? Exactly, so, that kind of story, yeah. <laughs> building on um, what Teresa said, actually it was interesting because there are some similarities and some stark differences. So very quickly I would say that in Egypt, we have a problem that the quality of local journalism has been really deteriorating. And that's because um, I think local media has not managed to redefine the role in the digital age, they're still stuck in the old role of the gatekeepers, you know, the old role of uh, journalists being we're the one who provide the information. They don't realize that this has changed completely now with social media and everything. And the, uh, there is, oh, we also have some ethical uh, problems, ethics and, you know, clickbait and all this. This was the way they adopted digital and then they fell victim to some of the big problems ethical uh, problems. We have another problem that's also contributed, um, uh, which uh, the poor quality contribute to as well, which is lack of trust, which is different from Teresa. So Teresa mentioned that um, in Malawi, they would trust local media. Actually, unfortunately, uh, of course, there are exceptions, but the let's say the majority or the many people do not trust uh, local journalism, and that's because um, poor quality is one of the reasons, and there is also a reason to relate to the polarization in the community. So we have, when you know, when you're polarization, you're like always you have to classify, you know, one media outlet as pro or one camp or another, and then you in that atmosphere, it's very difficult to find truly independent media, and also there is a problem of fact checking. Um, unfortunately, with the spread of misinformation, you can't. Local journalism has not uh, has let's not say has not succeeded to really uh, be up to the level of the the, the speed needed and the you know, importance of uh, fact checking that's needed in day to day reporting. So unless a report has the fact checking label that this is mainly to fact check, you find that a journalist very lenient in the fact checking so it's not integrated in the day-to-day -day process of reporting and, okay. and sometimes definitely also they contribute to uh, uh, misinformation in addition to economic hardships uh, which Teresa mentioned as well okay so um, guys just hold on for a bit we jumped the gun actually because we wanted to check out you know for our listeners and viewers uh, to have a feel of uh, exactly what we're talking about. So let's just pause for a second before I come to you, Berlin, to give us your situation. And let's check out this clip.
are the vaccines of tomorrow against fake news, against disinformation and against the spread of the coronavirus itself. The German Minister for Economic Cooperation and Development, Dr. Gerd Müller, recently launched a global initiative on transparency and media freedom together with Deutsche Welle Academy. The main aim of this initiative is to strengthen local media, those media that the people are most likely to trust. The initiative focuses on three priority areas. First, we support community media and help them develop new formats for the exchange of information, such as editorial platforms or fact-checking alliances. Second, we support shared crisis management. That means we bring together media, civil society and local authorities in their efforts to manage a crisis. And third, we support young people and help them improve their media and information literacy and protect them against fake news. I would like to thank our excellent panelists from Colombia, Egypt and Malawi for their dedicated work and congratulate them on everything they have achieved so far. We need partners like you who are really the backbone of everything we shall be discussing today. So thank you. Well, we got the message from Germany's uh, BMZ and uh, they've been partnering with Deutsche Welle to help to create different projects to tackle this problem. I was actually looking forward to first also see a trailer so we get a better understanding of it. If we have the trailer ready, can we play that? Censorship, intimidation, state brutality. Journalists worldwide are under constant pressure. There are so many political interferences in it. And all of a sudden, I got arrested. I was given a warning. So how do you create a balance between not having to be influenced by people giving you money so that you can tell the story and tell the story objectively? Reliable information is extremely important in times of a pandemic especially when people are feeling insecure and unsettled. Local media are key to ensuring that communities receive life-saving information. They are close to the community, can report on the ground and help to defend human rights. What we do is local, but of gravity. Community media to me means empowerment. Empowerment to the young people, to the women, to our community. But what can journalists do when they are forced to work from home, when they are cut off from their communities or lose their income? How are local and community media functioning in times of crisis? Are they able to fight the infodemic? Yeah, I, I guess that's the billion dollar question. Are they able to fight the infodemic? But guys, just a quick run through for those that just joined us. We are dealing with a topic uh, called uh, information saves lives. And uh, I have with me uh, three experts. Uh, they are actually involved in different media projects, uh, Malawi, Colombia, and Egypt, uh, discussing the role of local media in fighting the infodemic within the COVID pandemic. Now, earlier, we heard from uh, uh, Frederick Kersha, who is the head of the Division for Creative Industry, Media, Culture, and Sport. And uh, just now, you saw a trailer of uh, basically the challenges that local journalists have been facing. So talking about challenges, we've heard briefly from uh, Dina and uh, from Teresa, uh, the state of uh, local affairs, if I can put it that way, regarding journalists and journalism. Belen, what's your case? Well, I think they have just said a lot of things, <laughs> but I just want to add something. Uh, local media has to talk about facts, but also about causes and consequences because that makes people understand better, better understand what's happening. The global agenda is uh, not very deep, goes not very deep, but local media can go deeper and make people, help people to understand what all those things happening globally are, how are they related with their local problems, their local needs. Um, so local media must broaden the agenda. Uh, and local media has a challenge also related to justice and memory, because 
with the infodemic, a problem with the infodemic is not only that there, are, there is a lot of uh, information that is not uh, reliable, but there is a lot of information and people forget what's happening. And media must help to have the memory of the things that happen for the future, for the memory okay. and for justice. Okay, uh, th thanks, thanks for that. So, uh, clearly there are different levels when we talk about journalism. We're talking about local journalism, but what do we even mean by local journalism? Is it just a community level? Are we talking national? Are we talking regional or something? So, so I want to get these sort of different angles from you guys, and I'll come to you, Teresa, uh, to try to, from your side of things, talking about Malawi, to, to, to look at the centralized media versus local media and tell us about the similarities and differences in terms of operations. Mm -hmm. um, so in Malawi, when we talk about uh, local press, yes, I would say at some point you would uh, refer to the national media, and of course you also go down to the community media. And of late, we have really seen the growth of uh, the community press uh, in Malawi, especially the community radios. And these have really overtaken the national media in their localities. So if it's at district level, for instance, for the geographical ones, you find that people in that particular area listen to that particular uh, radio more than they would national. For the national ones, it's more to do with particular times of the day. So maybe they'll just tune in to listen to a news bulletin. But throughout the day, they'll be listening to their own community radio. Um, uh, the differences are mainly into the sustainability issue. For the community radios, you have journalists who are working on voluntary basis. These are journalists who have not really gone in through the formal uh, training. Uh, at national level, you have uh, broadcasters who have trained, who are, who are really trained. And so the quality of the journalism uh, is, is, is quite different in that sense. Um, okay. But for Misa Malawi, my organization has also tried to kind of train these community radios because we see how dependent their communities are on their, on their, on their operations. Okay, thank you very much, Teresa. Uh, coming to you, Dina, because you've been all over the place. You've 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 experienced working with like you know larger journal journalism corporations. You've you've worked with the BBC. Uh, you, you've you've been around, which, which is a good thing. So in that sense, uh, plus you've also been working with local journalists. Can you give us a sense of of that difference uh, between, in your case, working with local journalists versus international journalists? Oh, yeah, there are huge differences at many levels, but I would focus um, at the skills or the knowledge level. We have, I think one of the biggest challenges or obstacles we have is the level of education and training. And although there are many organizations and institutions who work on training journalists in our part of the world, let's say the Middle East, um, um, the problem is that sometimes this training, you know, you learn by iteration, you learn by doing. So a half day workshop or a full day workshop or even a one week workshop is not enough. It's good for lay, you know, introducing you to new concepts, especially if it's a completely new thing. You need to then have a place to go and be able to implement what you've learned. And that's one of the biggest challenges is that um, even if the training is available, there is no, there, you, know, you have absence of this training ground for you where you can practice and improve your skills. And that's one of the things we're trying to create for you. Yeah. So is that taking the journalists on a journey from pitching the idea until the production with the same standards they would get and the same feedback they would get in an international newsroom, but we make this available to journalists from across the Middle East and Africa. Okay. Talking more also about the challenges, Berlin, let me come to you. How has the pandemic aggravated a problem like infodemic? Well, I think pandemic make all problems bigger and also help us to, to, to show that the problem is a, it's a structural problem. With pandemic, we had the, the problem of accessing to information because the, um, the impossibility to move to the places. And then the local media had the opportunity to know what was happening because they had relation, close relation with people in the neighborhood. So telephone and also internet helped to, to know what was happening. Uh, but we also had a problem with sustainability 
uh, it's not only a problem, but it was also an opportunity because people uh, understood that internet was not, was not the only way to communicate and to have access to information. And the radio was very important for local uh, communities to access to, to information because uh, internet is not so good in some places here in Colombia and in the world. So the radio was a, a, a form to access to information. And I think uh, another thing that was uh, another way to, to challenge, to, to, uh, to, up, to overcome the challenge was uh, making efforts to, to make networks to strengthen the networks uh, between communities, between local media, between local and global media, because it was the, the way to access to information to and to broadcast also, because security was also a problem during pandemic. There are some things that some people with lots of power doesn't want uh, people to know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's exactly uh, the challenge. I mean, look, we could we could spend the whole day talking about all those challenges that are faced when you talk about the media, and especially in this case, talking about local media, where we've all made it clear they don't have as much um, uh, financial power, probably not as much security power compared to the bigger uh, platforms out there. So, so it's been challenging, but we want to save lives, and so we want to give. The accurate information. We want to fight an epidemic, so we have to find a way of making local journalism survive. How do we really? Where do we start? How do we address this, Dina? Well, I, ha I have to say that there is um, there are several very promising initiatives. For example, in Egypt, um, one of the things that the, the pandemic showed is uh, the absence of properly trained health journalists. Suddenly, everything has to cover the pandemic, you know, a health issue. And uh, for example, there is in Egypt this um, uh, initiative called Planet X, which is which is trying to provide information to journalists in Arabic, because you have to take also. There's another challenge, layer of challenge in the Arab world is the Arabic content is the language. Most of the content available in, in, on the internet is in English, and not everyone, if we're speaking truly about empowering local journalists, not everyone knows English. And that's another layer of the challenges. So what they did is that they started hosting, you know, uh, prominent science journalists and trying to translate some of their talks or to give tips and created this website to be a useful resource to Arabic journalists from across the Arab world if they want to cover science or health, um, you know, topics. So this is, for example, just one initiative. And that's the beauty of it is that, yes, we have a many challenges, but there are a lot of interesting solutions coming up. And the interesting things that they are coming up from these communities. But I think um, the role of international media outlets also like Deutsche Welle and others is to shed light on them because they are mm -hmm. worth, these initiatives are worth covering. Definitely worth covering. I'm 100% with you on that. Teresa, more on the solutions, especially looking at your case. Mm -hmm. I think the first one is obviously what Dina has mentioned. The training part is, has really been very, very critical. Uh, for, our, um, for, for Malawi, it was difficult to continue with the physical trainings, obviously. Uh, but uh, with support from DW Academy, we were able to uh, kind of continue with these trainings, very critical trainings, uh, using the WhatsApp platforms, for instance. These are readily available to journalists. So this was very, very helpful. Number two, I think, is it's, uh, it goes to what Belen mentioned earlier on. Um, in Malawi, the conversation now is going towards corruption in the media, and sometimes, you know, we are not able to publish certain very important stories uh, simply because um, our editors or maybe um, are a bit corrupt, you know. But you know, connecting the local journalists uh, who are doing IJ, investigative journalism, to be able to publish elsewhere on an international platform has also really been helpful. So important stories published elsewhere having a local impact as well. Okay. Uh, but let me, let me come to you, and I'm sure you also have a, a couple of solutions, but uh, before time catches up, um, let, let, let's talk about the, the role of social media in all of this, right? I mean, that's that's the obvious elephant in the room. It's in this day and age, hardly are people paying attention to what the traditional media. You have your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, I mean, you name it. And uh, statistics show that about 50% of the world's population has access to internet and social media. So what role 
is social media playing in creating more infodemic? Wow. Social, I think social media is very important because it helps uh, to helps the access to information. It facilitates the access to information and everybody feels not only a receptor or audience, but a producer of information. It, it helps in order to, to empower people because people is not only consuming, but also producing. Uh, I think that the role of local media is to, to talk with, with social media, to help people to understand that not all the things that you can uh, read or see in internet are true. And you have to make uh, yourself like a um, critic to those things. And you have to, to see the big media and also local media and also social media and, and, and understand them together, not isolated. And I, I think yeah. that's the, the role of local media. Okay, that, that, that's, that's good. Uh, Teresa, can you add to that? Yeah, um, I think social media and the internet has also been very critical, uh, especially for uh, sustainability of the bigger media institutions. As I say, they had to scale down on operations at the beginning of the pandemic. But some of them quickly realized, you know, we could monetize our work uh, on, on, on social media platforms. And that's what they did. We have a newspaper that survived uh, because they were able to monetize uh, their work on, on, on social media. And I think it remains very critical up to now. People are being creative on how they can get money to sustain their media work uh, through social media. Okay, not too uh, well. You wrapped it up yourself, so I couldn't catch you. Uh, I'm being told we would have to start wrapping up, so we're going to have to really do this quickly. 30 seconds each, final words, starting with you, Dina. Oh my God, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> So for me is that, yes, that we're having, it's one thing is that we're having huge challenges, but there are also interesting solutions coming from within these communities. And I think the international media outlet's role is to support these local initiatives. Okay. That's the duty of the national media. Nice, nicely uh, wrapping it up like that, Belen. 30 seconds, can you beat that? Yes, I, I will insist in networks. I think that the, in networks there's the solution for local media, for local journalists, and also for the communities. Because networks make people strong. And if we are stronger and we work together, we get better information and we go ahead. I like that. Together we are stronger. Final words from you, Teresa. Collaboration. We really need the big networks, international networks, to come together, work together with the local press, and make sure that we're giving out important information and not let misinformation overtake our role. Okay, I, I didn't have to struggle with you guys. You guys really know how to summarize and wrap up in a few seconds. Thanks a lot. And I mean, this is always a challenge delving into such a thick topic. There's almost no time to get into that. But uh, I appreciate your time and all that we were able to cover. I've been mean, talking to uh, Teresa Ndanga, investigative journalist and chairperson in Malawi's chapter of the Media Institute of Southern Africa, MISA. Also, uh, Dina Abgazala, journalist and founder of EGAP, startup for supporting local journalists. Agent and also Berlin Pardo Herrero, the radio broadcaster, and also part of the DW Academy uh, project, also coordinating different projects to help uh, you know support local journalism and local journalists. Hey guys, if you manage to join us, apologies for the earlier technical hitches here and there, but it is what it is. COVID makes us have to go online and you know we have to do what it comes. But I am Eddie Micah Jr. I've been moderating this panel. Hopefully, you learned a lot. Global Media Forum continues. Thank you, Eddie. That was a real race to the finish line there towards the end, <laughs> but it was exciting. What is the one key takeaway that you learned from this wonderful interaction you just had with your three panelists? Oh, I think we've already lost uh, Eddie. Oh, no, there he oops, is. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, great. There, there I, am. I think, I think it's, it's one thing that obviously stuck with me is, is basically their, their final words. It, it talked about you know, collaboration, cooperation, networking, coming together to be stronger and better to, to help, especially local journalists and local journalism thrive. And I think that's very essential, 
and so local journalists cannot stand on their own. If we're talking about central uh, media or you're talking about international media, we all have to sort of find a way of connecting the dots because at the end of the day, we all aim to, you know, address the same issues, right? We are all journalists and we want to, you know, be better and save lives. So collaborative efforts is the way to go. This is the key thing I took from it, Ed.